Problem 7. The point of this problem is to illustrate that you have many freedoms as you carry out Gaussian elimination. In this problem, if you were to use this 3 as your first pivot, then one way or another you would have to deal with a lot of fractions. If you were to divide the entire first row by 3, then in this location you would have 4 thirds, and in this location you would have 5 thirds, and when you're carrying out Gauss elimination by hand, dealing with fractions is somewhat cumbersome. So you can avoid these fractions by some row switching. If we were to switch rows 3 and 1, then it would put this 1 into the top left position, which is a desirable location for a unit pivot. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a copy of this problem once again. And let's switch rows 1 and 3. For that, let me make a copy of row 1. Put row 3 in place of row 1. Bring row 3 back. And do the same thing on the right-hand side. Now, because of this 1, we're in excellent position to carry out Gaussian elimination. Let's do it on the next line. So now 1 is our pivot. So, of course, the first step in Gaussian elimination is to subtract twice of row 1 from row 2. And that will eliminate this 2. Let's record the multiple. Replace the 5 with a 3 and the 9 with a 7. And on the right-hand side, it will replace the 7 with a 5. On to the next step. The next step is to subtract 3 of row 1 from row 3. So let's record the multiple. The first step is we'll eliminate this 3, turn the 4 into a 1, and the 5 into a 2. And on the right hand side, the 1, excuse me, the 3, and on the right hand side, the 3 becomes 0. And we're done with the first step in Gaussian elimination. And we see something neat. What we see is that it would once again be advantageous to switch rows 2 and 3 so that this 1 ends up in the pivot position and, make, and will make Gaussian elimination easier. So let's make another copy. Identify our next pivot, which will come from row 3. So the first thing we'll do is switch rows 2 and 3. Row 3 ends up here. Row 2 comes back here. And let's do the same thing on the right-hand side. 0 and 5. Okay. So now 1 is our pivot. And going on to the next line, let's eliminate this 3 which of course is accomplished by subtracting 3 of row 2 from row 3. This 3 is gone. The 7 becomes 1. And that's our next pivot as well. And this 5 is unchanged because this entry was 0. So we're done with the Gaussian elimination portion. So now let's embark on Jordan back substitution, which we'll do all in a single copy of this system. The first step of Jordan back substitution is to subtract 2 of row 3 from row 2, which eliminates this 2 and turns this 0 into a negative 10. The second step is to subtract row 3 from row 1, which will eliminate this 1 and turn this 1 into a negative 4, 1 minus 5. And the final step of Jordan back substitution is to eliminate this 1, which is accomplished by subtracting row 2 from row 1, which indeed eliminates this 1 and turns the negative 4 into a 6. And this completes the entire process of Gauss-Jordan elimination. And we can see that the columns are linearly independent. Therefore, there is a unique solution, and we actually see it right here. So the solution is 6 minus 10, 5, and this example vividly illustrated that we have lots of freedoms as we carry out Gaussian elimination and that we should use those freedoms to our advantage to make our manual job 
easier.